This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 453 of the Dressage Radio Show on the Horse Radio Network, brought to you by Kentucky Performance Products and Total Saddle Fit. Today, we're speaking with our friend Megan McIsaac, who traveled all the way from Wisconsin to California to attend the West Coast International Dressage Show Series. And we're going to discuss second level for our trainer tip this week. Sandfield from Loxahatchee, Florida. This is Philip from Rockwood, Ontario, and you're listening to the Dressage Radio Show. Well, hi, guys, and we have Glenn, too. Hi, Glenn. Yeah, Glenn. But he's not really on, and he is on, and he's off, and he's very busy these days. I'm here, and I'm right down the street from Reese in Boynton Beach. Hi. I, I, you guys getting into cruise mode. Yes, we are. Next week, we're on the Horse Lovers Cruise, and we're leaving you behind. <laughs> I, know. I, am, I, I am actually somebody's got to literally work next week guys yeah we will not be the ones uh, working next week no, I'm you work. be working. <laughs> i'm so bummed i mean i understand everyone's come on from up north but like we're full steam ahead here uh showing and we're getting you know there's just a lot going on so i am so bummed because i am actually staying in florida and working and not joining you guys so i'm not getting well, we're disappointed this you're not going to be along me too, but you guys are going to have such a good time. It's Valentine's and... Day. Your husband could have bought you the cruise and taken you up there for Valentine's Day, but no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, he and I are working, sadly, in different <laughs> locations. It's very sad. <laughs> but I'm super jealous, and you guys are going to have a blast. But I get to hang out with Phil. Phil's going to come down, and we're definitely going to work some work some horses on Thursday through Sunday. And then I get to join you guys uh, for the night before you get on the boat. So I'm sure that'll be quite, quite fun. So it's a well-coordinated plan. A little, yes. a little bit of work and a little bit of not work, and it's going to be good. Oh, I'm putting Phil to work while he's here, and I'm going to put my feet up. <laughs> I'll, bring the big, I'll bring like, the big whip down then, okay? Yeah, I'm going to put my feet up. He's going to teach all the lessons, and I'm just going to sit and drink <laughs> coffee and hang out in preparation oh. for a really hard week. Lovely. Well, uh, what, like what, else, what else is going, down, going on in Florida? Well, we had our first show of the season, which is just crazy uh, to say we had our first show of the season. And I kind of learned not a big lesson, but it was a good reminder. Um, you know, my follow me. Everyone's heard about him. You know, and we bought him last year and it's, everyone's been following along on my journey with him. And uh, poor guy, like he wouldn't. We, here at the horse show here in our neighborhood, we, we walk, we, we tack up at home and we walk down to the horse show and it's a good mile walk. I mean, it's pretty far uh, to go. And of course, Saturday is trash day, which is always a fun day and Wednesday. So there's all the trash cans and all the cars and trucks. And I mean, it is a lot. It, it really is. And it's a different type of show versus like when you stable there and they get used to things and they can walk around like it's different so uh, I schooled him on Thursday I actually showed Friday Saturday and we went down and schooled on Thursday and he'd been last year and he was good he was good to school and then I took him down on Saturday with the horse show going on and the poor guy like he just sort of like melted like he just was completely overwhelmed <laughs> and was i mean he didn't do anything bad exactly and and it was a good reminder like he hasn't shown since regionals which was in september a little bit my fault a little bit was you know he actually qualified for nationals but i didn't take him because it was quite expensive and just i decided not to take him and then i was going to do some schooling shows with him and then i got busy at home and didn't do it shame on me and so this was his first show and and he really it reminds you like you know, they have a little break and, it, and they have to get sort of back in the routine of things. And so I went down, I had my, my plan. I had plenty of time. I thought, and we got down there and we just melt like melted in the warm up. nothing terrible, but he can really buck on the lunge line actually. And so I was like, you know, I'm just going to get off. I'm just going to lunge a little while. We're going to take a deep breath. And that's what we did. And we did miss our class. I mean, we scratched. I knew I knew we were going to miss it. And I just was like, okay, you know, I can't get this together in 10 minutes. And it was our first second level, which is where our trainer tip's going to come from. 
So, uh, but it was a good reminder. You know, it is only February 1st or right the first week in February. And, and, and a reminder, you know, he's still young and, and I maybe overestimated it. I should have maybe done another schooling day, uh, which I ended up doing anyways. So it was, uh, live it was, and learn. Live live and and learn. And, and that on, happened. Right? Yeah. But I think it's, it was a good reminder for me. Like, it's not always the, like getting in the ring. Like, you know, I could have, I could have maybe made it in the ring, but I really just had to step back and say, I'm, I'm here really to make this a really nice horse um, at the end of the day. And, and it's not going to be productive to get in the ring today because he's not ready. And so uh, and then he came back the next day, uh, <clears throat> won his class, had a, you know, he's pretty, still pretty green for second level. Um, but uh, he was very good, had super canter work and super walk work. The chat work is still what needs to be developed, but uh, it was a great experience. So it was a good reminder. You know, sometimes it's not always getting in the ring or you have to make a decision. Like I wanted to show, but we weren't ready to show. So it was a good yeah. one. Yeah. And then we schooled another horse, another youngster, kind of went down and back three times by Saturday. He was also pretty tired. And then <laughs> shout out to Cassandra Hummert Johnson. She's been on the show a couple of times. Uh, she did uh, her first Grand Prix on her horse. Uh, it's not her. She is a gold medal, but first Grand Prix with this horse and uh, did a fantastic job. And every time she goes in the ring gets better. So that was super, super fun to watch and be a part of. So shout out to her because that's a, a huge feat for sure. Well, awesome. So um, I guess, you know, all that's left is what do we what do we got going for the show today? Yeah, we have um, we are going to talk with our good friend, Mez Megan McIsaac, uh, and she's on the West Coast and uh, she's going to tell us all about the CDIs there. So I hope you enjoy. Well, tonight we are so excited to have our friend Megan McIsaac on the show. She is an FEA rider and trainer and a good friend of Phil and mine. Welcome to the show, Megan. Yay. Hi, you guys. Thank you so much for asking me to come on the show. We always love it. Love it, love it, love it. So you are on a grand adventure. Can you tell us about it? I do. <laughs> you bet. Um, a few, actually, probably six months ago, um, I recognize the fact that I was burnt out and I wanted to get away from my business for a couple weeks, which actually ended up being seven weeks. And I'm really lucky. I have great staff and my mother is overseeing my barn and I have a really nice horse and I have a sale horse. And so I started calling around in Florida first. And then the West Coast is actually the Atacon West Coast Festival was announced and so I have some friends in California that I called and I said can I come be a working student for you and work off my room and board and then but I need to have the CDIs and the shows off and they were totally cool with it and so um, I left on the 28th of December and it took us four days to travel out it's two horses and it was two people, and we just eight hours every day. We found little horse hotels, and um, I arrived, and I think the first two weeks, I was a working student, which was definitely an eye-opener because I'm a head trainer at my own barn and run my barn, so it was amazing not to be the boss. <laughs> <laughs> and and to put myself in the shoes of my working students and like what's it like and to be a part of someone else's business um and see how they structure their business I mean it has been that isn't why I came um but I've definitely learned a lot in the time that I've been here and then the main reason I came was to be able to show in the winter and I'm in Wisconsin so I have great colleagues in Wisconsin. If they're listening to this, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, but they're not Stephen Peters, you know, like the best in the sport, the best horses. And so um, I said, you know, I really want to be inspired. I want to be motivated. I want to be humble. And um, because I was burnt out. And so I actually got to compete against Stephen Peters in my third level class with my sales force, which was, I mean, when you're warming up with uh, such an idol, I mean, you sit taller, you ride better. Um, it, it's just been absolutely incredible. The first CDI, I was a total geek. And, and I mean, I was just looking around and I was like, 
oh my gosh, there is um, Robert Dober, there's Christine Traurig, there's Gunter Zeidel, you know, the list is endless. And to be able to warm up with them and the Del Mar racetrack is absolutely stunning. It's a covered arena. Um, You feel like you're just going into a church and you feel really small and um, it's absolutely beautiful. Scott Hayes is the manager and the, I mean, fresh flowers every day. They have a lounge for the riders. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. And Heather Peterson, I believe, is the show secretary. And I think I hounded these poor people for months because I haven't competed in a CDI in years. And I was nervous about, um, you know, all the rules are different and the drug regulations and just getting out here. And, um, so, you know, I was sending them pictures of the products I use and what I feed my horse, and everybody has been so helpful and so nice to me, um, and it's just beautiful. It's really well run. The stalls are huge. Um, so I would say it's probably the best show facility I've been at, and plus, when you are, when I leave the hotel in the morning, I drive along the beach, I see the ocean. At night when I'm done, um, if it's not the freestyle, I can actually go and walk on the beach. Like, it's just been an amazing experience for me, and I'm, like, ready to go home now, um, yeah. even though I have one more show. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm ready to go home, and I just, I feel really good. Um, I, I actually, this last show, um, with my sail horse, I competed um, third level, and I had absolutely no expectations. And coming from the Midwest and the people I work with, you know, they're always supportive, but they're always like, you know, Megan, you're going to go out there, don't expect to do, you know, get the high scores, maybe even win a class. So when I went, I didn't even expect that I'd place in the classes. And I have to do a little brag. My little sail horse actually won a class at third level, and it was his second show. So, like, I'm thrilled. I feel... I feel good, you know, like my work is good and, um, uh, but I also am riding better because I'm looking around and going, Ooh, I got to work on this, (laughs) 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 you know? So it's really good to have that break. I, one of my clients said to me, you know, Megan, I've been here two and a half years and you haven't even taken a vacation. And I was like, please, please don't tell me that. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, you're like, that one hurts. That one hurts. Yeah. So Megan, can you compare sort of California to Florida? Because you have done now both circuits. So how, how does that, what do you, what is, what's the difference? Um, I would say right now there's a, there's a big shift. Um, I think the majority of the individuals are going to Florida. Um, and I think the classes are larger. I also think um, everything is at Global, um, and I actually never competed at Global. I did um, the three shows where it was Jim Brandon, and um, I can't remember the other names, but so you would travel around, and there's a lot more um, opportunities to socialize, in my opinion, in Florida and to really network. The farms are closer to each other. Um in Florida, and it's really, as of today, it's a much larger scene, whereas right now in California, they're try- Scott Hayes is really trying to build it and make more opportunities to network, but the, the trainers are much more spread out, and they're also doing a lot of education in California, not that they aren't in Florida, but at the actual competition. So they have um, master classes. So I think they're really trying to bring back the California circuit. And for me, it was really great because I knew I was going to be intimidated. And to have a smaller series, it was actually really helpful for me. So, but they're going to put, they're going to add on two more weeks. Um, next year. So they're really trying to build the California scene. So that's the difference that I see right now. I still think there's top riders in California. It's not that, but there's a greater volume in Florida and it's more, it's more condensed. So I think that's a huge attribute for Florida. Yeah. So Megan, um, you mentioned there, the, the master classes. did you attend? Have you been attending those? Um, how are they going? You know, what's, what's, what's up with, with that? 
I actually have not been able to attend because I'm competing in the freestyles, so I have to warm up um, while the master class is going. So I've been kind of sad about that um, yeah. because they're yeah, bringing sure. in really top quality. I like. I don't know how I'm going to make it happen, but I want to see Charlotte is coming to the next one. Um, I want. I would really like to see her. I haven't been able to ever see her in person, um, so. Uh, I hope I get to uh, participate in that. So that's been the only downfall. It'd be great if it was like at a lunchtime or something, but um, they're really trying to build um, Saturday nights as a big, as a big party. And it's, it's wonderful. Um, I get to the tail end after the award. So um, it's really done beautifully. I love it. I love it. Well, talk to us a little bit. I mean, I think, like you said, from a business standpoint, it is very hard to do what you've done. So, but tell us how and why you did it. I mean, it's, it's such a good way to refresh yourself, right? Yes. Well, actually I wasn't going to, um, I did the budget and I had asked several of my clients if they wanted to come with me and I gave them a budget of numbers and all of my clients decided to stay home and which, which was sad, but it was also really good for me because I'm, I'm always taking care of my students and I love them, but it's um it's a lot on one person when you go to a horse show when you have like seven or twelve or you know, and you're always having these stresses. So I ran the budget and I was like, Man, this is really really kind of frivolous. Should I really do that? And really I was I'm only going for mileage. I I don't have major goals. I don't, you know, I'm realistic that I'm probably not going to win a class um, in the CDI, um, but I really wanted to be in this caliber of people. And um, so what happened was, is one of my friends actually has a brain tumor. And within a week, um, I, I was, they told me, they announced it. And um, I was like, oh my gosh, and she's my age. And then that same week, I had another friend who was a horse trainer. That she fell off the horse, and the horse stomped on her, and she actually had to go into surgery. And I, I went, oh, my God, you've been working your entire life. You need to go. Like, you could be dead tomorrow. And that was actually what I did. I said, man, you're really putting your goals off for the business and for your clients why don't you actually focus on you and, you know, you're burnt out. And that's actually the real reason I left is I thought, man, life is short. And um, so it, it truly has been an adventure because I put the horses in my personal trailer and I hauled them out here with my mother going over the Rockies. And um, I, um, it took, you know, six months of planning to do it. Where am I going to go? I've asked, I had asked many people and, um, you know, it's only a short time. It's um, seven weeks and half that time I'm going to be at horse shows. So I'm not really a good working student in that sense <laughs> for someone who is taking me on. And uh, because I asked a few other people and they wanted me for three months and my business cannot afford me being gone that long. And so, especially if my clients don't come with me. So, um, then I plotted out all my bills and I actually paid all of my bills before leaving. So that was exciting. So I really don't have that many stresses. Like I'm not having to worry about my accounting. I can just focus on me. I have the two horses and I've never actually had more fun in my life. <laughs> yeah, wow. I, I wish I could be a working student all the time, but that's not, that's not realistic. And so... <laughs> Yeah, I, you know, you just don't have the stresses. So actually, I've been thinking about restructuring my business when I go back um, to how to less stress in my life because um, it just kind of wakes you up to like, oh, my God, why am I doing this? And I have to say, I haven't groomed so much. And that's really why I started, you know, with that connection with the yeah. horse. So I really enjoyed um what I've been doing, just spending time with horses. Whereas when I, I haven't taught a lesson, when I, I've been here, I haven't had to be the boss of any staff. I mean, obviously I'm calling home, but they're so cute. They, when I do call home, everything is great. And I'm like, wait a minute, it's a farm. There, there's yeah. something breaking, <laughs> oh, <thanks for> breaking. <laughs> you know, and I, I also 
had many meetings with my staff and my clients. I have to thank my clients because everyone I told, they were totally in support of me leaving. They, the only stipulation was is that I have to come back. And, um, and really, I, I couldn't do it without them because they are still, you know, um, paying me. You know, and and that was really special for me that they were supportive when, you know, because I said, oh, I'm leaving for, you know, seven weeks. Let's talk about it. And every one of them said, we want you to go. So um, that that's incredible. And my my staff was really supportive. And so so here we are out in California. And it's it's wonderful. Well, Megan, before we let you go, I have to ask you, uh, have you picked up any riding tips or, you know, what have you been working on in, in your riding and in, and in showing that maybe you can um, give to us for our, for our show? I think it really isn't a training tip, but um, really believe in yourself, um, you know, and when you're struggling, acknowledge it and working on throughness. I actually had a lesson with Kathleen Rain and my horse. Actually, I do have a training tip. My horse, um, I've been working on getting him more uphill, and he's tricky because he's, his neck um, is set low, and so getting him more uphill and not leaning on my hands, and he's a big mover. And normally I work on, you know, like a little pee off, lots of transitions, focusing on getting the hind end under. But she actually has me tapping him on his shoulder in the first lesson and it surprised both of us. I was really awkward at it. And, um, you know, when he starts to drop in the shoulder, I tap him on the shoulder. Uh, that's what she asked me to do. And he actually responded and came up a little bit through the wither. So that was the new technique that I've learned. Um, is that would have been Saturday. So, um, yeah, that was a lot of fun to work on that. But the, the main thing, that I've really learned is really believe in yourself, you know, make mistakes, go out there um, and um, believe in your horse. And um, because this second show, I was really having a lot of self doubt and it really affected my performance. So, so that was really what I've learned out here. I think that's great. And it's so true, right? I mean, that's, even as trainers, everyone thinks, oh, you're a trainer. You no, know, it doesn't matter. We're still riders and we're still out there and we're still having goals. And to be able to to really step back and say, no, I need to work on my riding and I need to believe in what I can do and my, my horse can do is incredible. Mm-hmm. And, and, and really something mm-hmm. we forget. Everyone thinks, oh, yeah, they have tons of confidence. Uh, we like to mm-hmm. show that we do. But when you get a bunch of trainers in the room, talk about that and it's like it's a lot and, and to go out in the big ring is hard nobody said that was easy so um you know I, yeah I, I, no it's really hard you know um because you look around and that self-doubt comes and if you really don't have a coach um that's saying you know do this hey you're looking good that self-doubt creeps in at least for me I want to do the best by my horse and um it doesn't matter who you are you need to have a support group and we all I think we all doubt ourselves because we're wanting to do the best by our horse. I could have done that better. You know, uh, that's just our mentality, but I really have to say, Hey, you're doing a good job. And that's also what this trip was about. We, we are doing a good job with these horses and I'm really proud of them. Um, you know, the main thing was, can we walk from the stall to the warm up arena, to the show arena and go back, you know, cause it's, it was the one horse's second show. So I'm thrilled. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> i love it i Wonderful. love it it's the little things in life right <laughs> yes it is it is so megan tell us how can our listeners find you online if they're in california or want to learn, or learn more about your business in wisconsin yeah i would love that um you can look me up on the internet it's uh linden hop it's l-i-n-d-i-n H-O-F as in Frank.com, or you can um, look me up on Facebook, Megan McIsaac or Lindenhoff. I have both pages and I would love to help anyone. Super. Thanks so much, Megan. Yeah, thank you. Have a great day. Well, that was super fun, Phil, to hear all about the CDIs in California. And I hope everybody on the West Coast is able to to enjoy those shows. They sound fantastic um, and get a little bit of the, the experience we get here in Florida. 
out west. So I hope you do. And um, right after this commercial break from Kentucky Performance Products, Phil and I will be back with a trainer tip. The sun is just peeking above the tree line as you walk into the barn. You grab your horse's halter off the hook and head out to the field. The dew shimmers in the sun as you walk across the damp grass. You call his name and his head comes up as he walks toward you looking for the apple in your pocket. You take your time grooming, enjoying the peace and quiet in the empty barn. A refreshing breeze greets you as you start down the tree-lined path. Your horse ambles along on a loose rein as you both enjoy a relaxing ride. The feeling you get on an early morning hack is why we do what we do at Kentucky Performance Products. This feeling is brought to you by Microphase. Fill the nutritional gaps in your horse's diet. Microphase vitamin and mineral supplement is a low calorie way to provide your horse with the vitamins and minerals missing from their diet. The horse that matters to you matters to us. This week's dressage training tip is brought to you by Total Saddle Fit, home of the shoulder relief girth at totalsaddlefit.com. Well, Reese and I are going to talk a little bit about second level and give you some tips for riding and training it. But first, I wanted to talk about the Total Saddle Fit shoulder relief synthetic girth. You know that Reese and I got uh, got one of these girths and we I think we both use it on a Frisian, don't we, Reese? I mean, well, that's I did have I, it on a Frisian, but I actually have it on a warm blood now, and I love it. It's it's great, and especially here in Florida, where the, it's really gross and <laughs> sticky, and everybody knows I right. just hose my girth, yeah. and so Justin does not have a heart attack when I hose this girth, for sure, but it's great. It's fantastic. It's a great price point, <laughs> and um, yeah, that's the wonderful thing about Total Saddle Fit and the Stretch Tech girths. Uh, uh, sorry, the shoulder relief girths. They have Stretch Tech. They have the synthetic. They have a leather one. They have ones with covers. So you can really find what you need for your horse or horses if you work a lot of horses. Uh, it's a great product. Yeah, the synthetic one is really, you know, exceeded my expectations about holding up to being, you know, used a lot because I've had synthetic products before. So I typically go with the leather products because they stand up to kind of hard work and everyday use a lot more. I didn't know how well this synthetic one will would stand up, but I've been using it and using it, hosing it down, washing it, not really taking that much that great of care of it, and uh, it keeps coming back and it's it's still like brand new. So I think that you know even though it's in the lower price point, it's a really good girth, and uh, I think you'll have it for a long time. So Phil, we have a great. Well, we're going to try to be great. Uh, Total Saddle Fit Tip of the Week. Kind of coming from my horse show this weekend because second level, oh, it's really hard. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, I get a lot of questions like, oh, well, you know, can't I just be kind of, you know, okay at second level? Can we just, you know, continue to train? You know, I'll, you ride my horse for a month and I'm going to, and you put the flying changes on and then we'll just go ahead and ride third level. I, I, I want to be and even one of myself, those people. you know, with my own yeah. horses. I, want to be I kind that of think like, yeah, can I do that? You know, but I think it's important <laughs> to take. It's kind of a year in between first level and third level, if it's you know in the natural, normal progression of how we try and do things, to uh, to take that time to really carve out, you know, a a good counter canter, which you know nobody nobody likes riding counter canter. I'll tell you that right now. Everybody prefers just to teach a change and and do flying changes, but. You know, I can't believe how, uh, if you're riding, you know, really spending time on a counter canter, to how much it really improves, proves the horse's true canter, you know, that they, they learn to balance so much better. And then, you know, when it comes to teaching the flying changes, they can do them so much straighter and so much better. So I, I think we, you know, kind of thinking that we would all like to just kind of train second level and then just, you know, move on as fast as possible. But you know, the older I get, the more, you know, I think like this is a really important stage of development for the horse. And it's really important to polish, you know, each of these movements, whether it's shoulder in or travail or simple changes, you know, not to, you know, not to s skip movements or, or to, to skip the polish stage because uh, it'll come back to bite you later on in, in fourth level, maybe, or 
pre-Saint George, and you'll find yourself having to go back to do it anyways. So I think I think it's good you're showing your horse second level and really working on those things, making sure they're really really good, and then you can carry on and move on, and and it, it makes life easier later on. I think. Yeah, and you know uh, Phil knows knows his horse and, and works with me with him and and gets to see him on Friday. Uh, so Phil knows this guy, and and this is a big horse. He's very big. He's very long. Um, the collection is he's actually very talented for the higher level collections like Piaf and Passage. Um, but right now we're we're in, we're in that stage of sort of struggling, especially with the trot. Um, and second level test one is pretty forgiving. You know, if I can have the option to post, um, I can do that all along, right? I can I can make him uh, make the trot better and everything's fine. Well, at the end of the day, I'm gonna have to sit the trot and he's gonna have to get stronger. And that just takes reps, I mean, that just takes time. And second one is pretty forgiving with that, which is nice because in the stage where we are, that's kind of where we are. So there is a big difference between second one and second three, right, Phil? I mean, second three, it's got the business in it. Um, it's got it's got all the movements, I think. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's really, and and it goes here to there and and everywhere. And you, yeah. and I think this is really where you have to start re- riding canter because there is a long segment in canter. In uh, second three, it was second two as well. I mean, you, you mm-hmm. see, when you're second riding one. first level and then riding second level, like there's just like, oh, there's so much canter, right? Mm-hmm. And so, you know, that's why I really, you know, with my students and with my own horses, just really try and spend a lot of time developing that canter mm-hmm. and making sure it's really good. I, I, I mean, I, I know for a lot of people, they just kind of close their eyes and ride that three loop serpentine, in, you know, with the middle. <laughs> Counter and just you know, but you see a lot of horses running through it and whatever. I mean, it's just such an important development phase mm-hmm. for the horse and rider. You know, a rider that can really ride a really good second level test um, has figured out the skills and and uh, is then ready to move on. And and you know, right. you've developed the horse's strength and carrying power, and then you're ready to really start to do some some more serious collection. But um, and yeah, if you're not going about doing this training, you're not it's not going to show well in third level. Like you can't just, you really can't just skip it and, and, and hope for the best of the next thing. So I think, yeah, our advice, to, you know, for everyone this week is to, to really take the time. It usually takes uh, new riders about two years of showing second level to really kind of get the point of it and, and being able to, to ride, uh, you know, not just a technically correct test, but a more powerful, a more, you know, uh, elastic horse and and uh, it's worth working on. It's worth doing. It is. It is. And I mean, that's where I am with my horse. I mean, we're, it's a tough. It's a tough phase, right? This whole sort of learning collection and laying the groundwork. Um, I, I will not lie. My horse was uh, a little bit early to show him a second level. I just honestly, I didn't want to show first level. He he's really good at that. He did that last year, uh, and he really needs to go to horse shows. Obviously, like I talked about earlier in the show, he he has. I mean, he just hasn't shown, so he needs sort of the culture. So I know I I need to spend some time and and do some work here uh, and kind of slug it away. And I, you know, I'm going to do our, our home show here again in a couple of weeks to get him out, get him doing, get him going. Um, because that's important for him uh, from a development standpoint and the culture standpoint, but from the riding standpoint, I know in the next six months we're working hard. Uh, and this is a, this is a huge development stage for them. And that's why people struggle. So I, I know it, the struggle's real for me too. <laughs> I'm struggling too. Um, but it's one of those things that you have to do and continue to do uh, and do and do and do until you really get them. And uh yeah, it's it's a fun development stage actually. Like I'm I'm enjoying it with my horse, and um, the only reason I'm showing is it's relatively easy and it's literally in my neighborhood here in Florida. Um, but it is fun. It's a good time. It's a fun stage of development, and you know some days they get it and you're like yes yes that's it, and then other days you're like oh no 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 what happened? <laughs> and I think that's very normal. You know that's super normal when developing, but the second level that's why everyone hates it. <laughs> including myself and Phil. Um, so we hope that helped. If there's anybody slugging away at second level, send yeah, us got questions. An email. Yeah, if you got questions yep. about shoulder in, trav air, turn on the haunches, we love to answer them, counter canner, all of it. So uh, send, send us uh, a video, send us uh, an email, 
get in touch with us on Facebook, however you want to do it. We'd love to help out with your second level problems. You got it. <laughs> well, everybody, as always, you can find our show notes and links to today's guests on our website, dressageradio.com. Like us on Facebook, just search Dressage Radio Show. Follow us on Twitter at Horse Radio. My website is maplecrestfarmky.com, and my email is reese at horseradionetwork.com. The best way to find me is probably on Facebook, or you can email me at philip at horseradionetwork.com. I'd like to thank our sponsors this week for allowing us to put on a show. And don't forget to check out all the other shows on the Horse Radio Network at horseradionetwork.com. Everybody, keep your heels down and your shoulders back. And we hope you enjoy the best of next week because Philip is on a cruise with Glenn. <laughs> uh, so you guys have a great Woo-hoo. couple weeks, and we'll talk to you all soon. Woo-hoo.